Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all yet again another Arrow episode review right here on Otaku Assemble! Weekly, and as always, here to bring you the latest in this week's Arrow episode review, and this is my review of Season 4, Episode 2, entitled The Candidate. Now, general thoughts on this week's episode. I really dug this week's episode. Mostly because I'm not sure if Arrow ever did this before, but as the title suggests, The Candidate, what we get in this week's episode is we get a villain who is acting on his own accord, but to appease the big bad of the season. Sort of like an initiation process. Um, and I really thought that was cool because it's like, okay, he's not, he, he wasn't hired by the big bad. And he isn't necessarily acting on behalf of the Big Bad. He is appealing to the Big Bad's overall agenda, but he is still his own man. He's still doing his own thing. And it's, it's like an initiation process. Like he has to prove that he can perform this in order to get in leagues with the Big Bad. And I dug that because I'm like, that, that's kind of cool. And I don't know if Arrow ever did that before. I, I can't recall an episode where we've seen that. But because we even had conflict between Damien Dark and the candidate in the episode where Damien did not like his methods, did not like what he was doing, did not like how he conducted business and treated him like a liability. Like, yo, dude, you are creating problems for me. This is not how my organization operates. This is not what we do. You need to get this together. And so I, I, I sort of dug that and the way, ooh, White Rabbit by Egypt, by Egypt Central. I love this song. <laughs> I didn't even realize that what was playing. Anywho, but, uh, but even by episodes in, we, 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 it was so cool how they kind of created this dichotomy between the two villains. And I'm like, I'm curious if we're going to see this happen, you know, if we're, if we're going to see this guy again, like, all right, so anywho, so yeah, all in all, I, I, I dug what they did with the villain in this episode. Um, other general thoughts, um, what happened with Oliver and Thea in this episode? Loved it, absolutely loved it. And I'm like, okay, yes, I, I, I'm getting what I, what I asked for. Okay, cool. Um, what they set up going on with Laurel, I'm like, okay, yes, now we know where this is leading to. Um, I mean, all in all, I dug the episode. I dug it. Yeah, I, yeah, there were a few, there, there are some minor complaints I have about it, but nothing substantial. Oh, and then the cliffhanger, what, what we ended the, seat, the episode on, I was like, finally. And I'll get, I'll touch on that later in this review, so. All right, so brief synopsis of the episode. As I mentioned before, um, this week, Oliver and the team, they're dealing with a guy who has targeted Jessica Danforth, who apparently is an old friend of the Queens, and she's decided to run for mayor. Well, of course, she instantly becomes a target. Um, her daughter is abducted. You know, it's the whole, okay, this is someone who's trying to assume power. You know, and of course, Damien Dark, he's trying to assume power in Starling or Star. I don't know if they're officially calling it Star now because Felicia said Star, Quentin said Starling. I don't know if we're calling it Star now. I'm just, for the sake of this review, I'm just going to stick with Starling. Um, but of course, Damien, he's trying to assume power in Starling, so of course, we can't have that. But as I mentioned before, this guy is not. Uh, he was not hired by Damien. He was not selected by Damien to, to do this job, to target Danforth. No, he wasn't. This guy is trying to get in leagues with Damien. He wants to join Hive. And so, yeah, he goes ahead and, you know, he attacks Jessica. He abducts her daughter. Um, he practically tortures her. And, uh, and the whole while, and like I said, I really dug the scene between this guy and Damien because that dichotomy that I mentioned before, what they established in this episode, and here's another thing too, we we got to get into Damien's head more, how Damien said no, what he wants is order, that is his main deal, that is his, his 
his ends. That is his objective. He wants order. And what the candidate represented, and I, for God, I cannot remember the character's name, but what he represented was anarchy. Cemented in the final scene when we found out what happened after he was taken to the hospital, after he was supposed to have been taken to the hospital after the confrontation with Oliver and Thea, where he was burned alive, what did he do? He killed the two guys in the ambulance, and then he made the anarchy sign in blood on in, you know on the wall of the ambulance and that's what Damien said he said I want order what you represent is anarchy so I'm like okay that's a real cool dichotomy I'm totally digging that and now that we know this guy has escaped the possibility of him returning it's possible we could see this guy again we might even see him this season I that'd be really cool um so yeah so that was the main thing going on in this episode. Other things going on in this episode, we still have the um, conflict between Oliver and Quentin. You know, Quentin still doesn't trust him. Oliver is still trying to, you know, get into, well, not necessarily get into Quentin's, Quentin's good graces, but trying to, you know, tell him, yo, I'm doing things differently now. You can trust me now, you know, get me involved. You know, put me in the game, coach. Put me in the game. Um, so we still got that going. We have uh, Diggle has finally shared with Laurel um, why he is so hell bent on getting, you know, finding Hyde, getting down to the bottom of it because they're responsible for his brother's death. Now Laurel knows that. And then the other big thing is the we finally have figured out what's going on with Thea. It is side effects of the Lazarus Pit, which is another thing I love. Because, once again, going back to my comments about Flash, you know, the more these shows stick to the comic book continuity, the more I'm like, yes. Because here's the thing, it's, it's, it's all, this is what happens when you're talking about adaptation. You know, showrunners, writers, producers, directors, they can all take creative liberties with the source material. Whenever these shows are sticking to that source material, I can't help but eat it up. I love it. And so, yes, the Lazarus Pit that we have within the Arrow universe, it operates the same way that it does in the comics. It brings people back to life. It rejuvenates them, and guess what? It drives them batshit crazy. And I'm digging it. And apparently, that's what's going on with Thea. Now, I will say this. One complaint I have about that whole thing is that it feels like it's another... Um, is just another uh, rehash of what we got with Roy. Oliver is mentoring a ward who is out of control for reasons beyond their control. Meaning Thea, she's going batshit crazy because of the effects. I'm in the middle of a review. I'm in the middle of a review. Sorry. Thea, she's going batshit crazy. Why? Because of the side effects of the Lazarus Pit. Roy. He was going crazy because of the Miracuru. So it, it feels like a rehash. And the whole Oliver having to mentor an out of control ward. But with Thea though, I'm sorry. I, like I mentioned before, I just like, I like Thea. I like her as Speed. I like her as Oliver's ward. I, I just like this more than I did with Roy. I think they did a better job at developing Thea, at setting her up to become speedy. Much better than they did with Roy. At times, I felt Roy was just shoehorned in there. Um, I don't think, I mean, they. I mean, let's face it, they spent an entire season leading up to this with Thea. And then also, but here's the other thing too, because they did the whole darkness inside Thea, and her being Malcolm's daughter, yada, 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 yada. So I'm like, how many, how many more things are you going to throw at Thea to make her seem antagonistic or to make her seem like a dark character to make her seem like at any moment she can become Malcolm how many more times are you going to do this um but I'm not gonna lie to you the whole uh Oliver Thea fight I loved it I loved it I was about to call up my little sister like hey you need to turn on Arrow because 
I, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting the flashback because and 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 I'm and guys, look, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Oliver Thea, I I just love their relationship because it does remind me of me and my little sister. It does. We're closer in age though, and Thea I think has a little bit more patience with Oliver. And vice versa, where me and my little sister, we don't have patience towards each other at all. Um, and we certainly did. We didn't growing up. Um, but th I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, I, I, I can't really, ex I don't really know how to explain more how much I just love that relationship and what they're doing with it. I, 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 I totally dig it. Um... And it's one of the things, like I said, like I mentioned, I'm getting what I asked for. It's one of the things I expected to see now that Theo was a part of the team and now that Oliver would have to mentor her. It's one of the things I said that I wanted to see happen, that, you know, they would have to, you know, they would have to come to blows. They would have to, you know, hash some stuff out because of everything that has happened in the first three seasons and because of the secrets they kept from each other and because of the line of work that they're in now. You know, we were just going to have to deal with this. So, I like it. I don't know about you guys. I'm digging Oliver, the Oliver and Thea relationship right now. I, I love it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Um, so, going back to what I said about the exposition about the Lazarus Pit. Now that we know we're dealing with the same Lazarus Pit, now that we know what it does, and of course, now they have started doing Sarah's Resurrection Story. Um, because that's where we left Laurel and Thea at the end of this episode. They went to Sarah's grave and they dug her up. So now we know. Now those pieces are connected. Now I know. Okay, I knew Sarah was coming back. Then I found out it was by means of the Lazarus Pit. Okay, now I know how. Okay, great. Fantastic. Let's keep it rolling. Um, other thing I wanted to talk. Okay, another complaint I had about the episode and that is uh jessica danford the fact that she came out and was like yo i want to be mayor and you know starling city needs this and all that jazz and then at the first sign of opposition at the first sign of trouble after her daughter was taken she folded now of course don't get me wrong guys it's very realistic in that sense you know any rational human being would react that way my thing is this though i just felt like they threw her in the episode to be a victim and i'm like uh i don't really like that you know i would have dug it if she decided to ride it out regardless you know that was her attitude halfway through the episode before they found out that her daughter was taken and you know it's it's like okay somebody tried to kill you you stayed in the game great the second your fat once they up the ante and they went after your family then you fold and it, to me it just felt like she was only in the episode for that to happen to you know what i mean like i i mean i don't even know if her character will ever appear in the season again or in, the, or in the show for that matter because it just felt like she was here for that one reason and now she's gone and I'm like dude y'all come on man y'all kind of dropped the ball on that the other hand had that not happened we wouldn't have gotten Oliver's big thing at the end of the episode when he's decided to run for mayor and this has been something if you guys will go back if you go back and watch my Arrow Season 1 reviews where I said this was one of the things that I wanted to see happen in the show. Because the first Green Arrow comics I ever read was that late 90s run when, um, I don't, I'm not sure if it was the Kevin Smith run. It might have been after that because I'm talking like 97, 98, you know, post Death of Superman, D.C., where Oliver was mayor of Star City. And I dug those stories. Actually, I think it might have been Kevin Smith's run because Connor was in those comics. Um, but when Oliver was mayor of Star City, I dug that. I was like, oh man, this is so cool. You have a superhero who's a mayor. Now, keep in mind, this was before I went back and I read Older Green Arrow where it was just, you know, typical Oliver Queen. But so, so one of my earliest introductions to the character was that of the politician. 
And so this has been something I've been wanting to see in the show. I just didn't know when it would happen. I thought it would happen in season three after Moira ran for mayor and got killed. And then, of course, uh, Brother Blood became mayor and got killed. And I was like, okay, now Oliver's going to become mayor. Had to wait an extra season. But now we're starting to get it. And I'm like, yes. Yes. So, like I said, the Jessica Danforth thing, I, I, I kind of felt like that was a letdown. But the payoff was that now my boy Oliver is running for office. And he's going to be awesome. I'm hoping he'll be awesome. Once again, I don't know how much from the comics they'll actually incorporate into the show. But if they incorporate half of what they do of the comics into the show, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. And I'm totally looking forward to it. Um, So, actually, that does wrap up. Oh, okay. One final note about Felicity at Palmer Technologies. And the new character they introduced, I never got the guy's name, but the, the, but the new black guy. And I'm like, all right, we got another brother in the show. Sweet. And he's a tech dude, and he's super smart. Sweet. All right. I'm, I, I, I kind of like this guy. I'm, I'm digging this. All right, cool. Hopefully, what I'm hoping for that guy is, is sort of that he'll become Felicity's number two at Palmer. At, is it, it is Palmer Technologies, right? Not Palmer Industries. I think it's Palmer Technology. Um, technologies, but um, I'm hoping he'll sort of become like Felicity's number two there. Um, but 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 I, I like the guy. I like the character. I'm digging what the actor's doing with him. It was pretty cool, you know. It kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting that. I'm like, oh look, we got another brother, man. All right, all right. So um, so yeah, that's pretty much all my thoughts on this week's episode. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. And in the comments below, let me know your thoughts both on this week's episode as well as what your thoughts on the rest of the season will be. And please feel free to comment, share your thoughts on anything I've shared in this video. If you like this video, please feel free to like it. Um, if you think any of your other friends or anyone else you know might enjoy it, please feel free to share. And as always, if you haven't done so, feel free to subscribe. Subscribe here, the OAW YouTube page. Find us on Facebook and Twitter. Please feel free to like and follow accordingly. Uh, what's coming later down the wire? Tomorrow will be my Black Cell Season 2 review, finally. I know it's a week late. Sunday, you'll be getting my Viking Season 3 review, finally. I know it's late. And then, oh, wait, no, I said correction, because today is Friday, but this is going up on Saturday. Those will be the next two videos. I confused even myself, because my Flash review is late. So this video is going up on Saturday, Black Cells on Sunday, Vikings on Monday, Daredevil on Tuesday, Supergirl Expectations on Wednesday, Flash on Thursday, Arrow on Friday. Alright, with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief. I need to go sleep. I need to take a nap. <laughs> Signing off, and until next time, peace.